This video looks more into non-parametric regression and how the flexibility of the model affects the estimate and how there's sort of a happy medium when it comes to model flexibility. So to begin with, we'll start by uh, recreating the figure from the textbook. Um, so since it, you've already seen that, I'll just run the code and we'll, we'll look at a few features over here. So if you remember this one, there's four graphs. The scatter plot, these dots, that part is exactly the same in each of the four graphs. In other words, they're all using the same exact data set, the same data points. Uh, so for example, this point down here, the x value is about 1, the y value is about 0.4. This dot up here represents an observation where x is equal to 9 or so, and y is equal to 3, and so on. Additionally, the black line is the same in each of the four graphs. The black line is the true CEF that we're trying to estimate with our non-parametric regression. So the one thing then that's different is the blue line, which is the estimated regression function. Uh, so starting here in the bottom right, you can see the label, it, it says not flexible enough. So here is just fitting a linear in X model with an intercept, so it's just a straight line. And you can see because the CEF has these curves to it, fitting the straight line is not able to really capture the essence of the true CEF. Uh, one way to see this, other than just it being visually apparent, we think about you know, changing x from 4, increasing it to 6. You can see in the true CEF, y jumps from about or the conditional mean jumps from about 1 up to about 2 over here. Whereas with the uh, linear fit, moving x from 4 to 6 is only associated with a change from maybe 1.4 up to 1.6, so a much smaller change. Uh, conversely, if we look over at the largest x values, the true CEF, CEF is basically flat at that point, whereas the linear fit, because it has the same slope everywhere, regardless of x, suggests that the conditional mean will just keep on increasing and increasing no matter how much bigger x gets, uh, which in this case is not true. So we can see it's bad if our model is not flexible enough. At the other end of the spectrum, over here in the bottom left, we can see if the model is too flexible, that's almost even worse. Uh, we can see it just jumps around, the blue line, I mean, uh, jumps around. There's clearly some overfitting problem where it's just trying so hard to have the function go through all of the data that it really misses the underlying CEF. Um, so you could think about this as you know, the CEF is like the signal and the CEF errors are like the noise. And here, just fitting all the noise and missing the signal. Uh, we're sort of too sensitive to all these CEF errors and we're not actually estimating the CEF itself. Uh, the top two panels I won't talk about much, but GCV and LOOCV are two formal uh, statistical model selection procedures that try to look at the data in order to decide how much flexibility the regression model should have. And in this case, it seems like they both have done a very good job at picking an appropriate uh, degree of flexibility uh, from x equals 2 up to x equals 8. They're almost exactly
correct with the true CEF. Uh, below that, it's a little bit too high, but that's kind of understandable. We just happen to get a data set where every single data point is above the true CEF down here. And similarly up here, the estimate is too low, but that's because the data set, every single data point up here is below the true CEF. Um, so you can't really blame the model selection procedure for that. So now I'm going to run some more code over here. Um, don't really need to worry about the code itself, but what it's going to do is make a lot of plots in between the extremely not flexible in the extremely flexible ends of the spectrum so that we can get a more intuitive sense of how the estimate changes. So here DF stands for model degrees of freedom. So it's sort of how flexible is the model. So one is going to be the smallest amount of flexibility and I think 48 is the biggest. Um, so here, one is like we just have one parameter. Uh, so there's just an intercept term, and there's not even a slope coefficient. Uh, so obviously, that is not flexible enough. We just get a flat line. And so it completely misses the fact that the CEF starts low and goes high. Uh, if we increase the flexibility slightly by adding a slope in addition to the intercept, and now df is equal to 2. You can see it does better. Now we get that general low to high, uh, but as we discussed before, it sort of misses the fact that it's really flat over here, and then steep in the middle, and then flat again. So still not flexible enough. Uh, adding more flexibility, now we see the blue line has a little bit of curvature to it. It's getting a little bit better, but still not flexible enough. Uh, increasing flexibility more, now we see even more curves and it's able to match that middle part of the CEF better. A little bit more. This is now very close to uh, maybe exactly what the formal model selection procedures choose. And you can see it does a very good job for almost all values of x, except the very uh, highest values and very lowest values. And we'll see after that, well, what if we add more flexibility and more flexibility? Now it actually starts to get worse again. It starts getting pulled away by the points that are above the CEF and pulled down too low by points that are below the CEF. And so now instead of fitting the CEF nicely, it starts to get more wiggly and just fit the data points better, but not estimate the CEF as well. If we add more and more flexibility, you can see now it's really able to just wiggle up and down and up and down. Uh, but it turns out for this example, that's not good. And so we can keep increasing it even more. It's even more wiggly, more wiggly and worse and worse estimate until we get up to that uh, extreme example uh, where we basically have just as many parameters as data points and we're just completely overfitting. Our function is going through every data point. So our, you know, r squared is equal to one, our residuals are all equal to zero, uh, but we get a really bad estimate of the CEF. So I'll just run that in reverse now, going from too flexible. You can see it when we decrease the flexibility, we'll start to get better and better estimates until we get to around df equals 5. Um, and then after that, it'll again start to get worse. Here's getting less flexible. You can see it's getting rid of some of those uh, really bad errors, those huge wiggles starts to get better and better as we reduce the flexibility. It's getting closer and closer to that true CEF until this point where sort of as good as we can do. And then when we reduce the flexibility further, it starts to actually get 
worse estimate again. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that little uh, frame by frame video and uh, have a good intuition for these flexibility and model selection of flexibility.